Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you so much for being part of this uh, very important gathering for COVID HaTorah to pay tribute to one of the greatest poiskim of our generation, greatest Talmud Chachamim of our generation, Rav David Feinstein, Zatzal. And uh, we're gathered to, to pay appropriate COVID HaTorah to give him uh, a tribute to him and, and his life, but we do so uh, in order to pay honor and covered to the Torah that HaKadosh Baruch Hu gave us when we honor Talmidei Chachamim, and especially to honor a Talmid Chacham who gave so much to Klal Yisrael in so many different ways. And um, this gathering is, uh, is honored by the presence um, of, uh, of those who are going to be maspid and to share his spadim, Dibrei Hespid, um, on, um, uh, with regards to Rav David Feinstein to, to share words of Chizuk and Dibrei Hespid. We have uh, the, the, the great privilege of having with us um, uh, Rav David Cohen Shlita, um, a, 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 a Poesik and Talmud Chochem in Klal Yisrael, whom we all rely on so much for, for, for Psak and Hadrocha. And uh, it's a great honor to have such a Talmud Chochem uh, with us. And um, I would like uh, to, to ask uh, Berushus, uh, Rav, um, um, Rav Agon, Rav David Cohen, to, to please address us and share some uh, Divrei Chizuk and Divrei Hesped uh, to, to this gathering. Kvayit Rav Roshi Goldstein Shlita, Kvayit Marana Varabana Varabai Sai, Worthy assembled. The word hefseid is really the oisius hes, hespeid is oisius hefseid, which means that the underlying reason for a hef, hesped is to find where the special midos of the nifter, the outstanding midos of the nifter were such that they, now they're lost to us. Actually, every single Jew is worthy of a hespeid, hefseid. As the Gemara says, kishem she'en partzufein shavos, kachein deyesein shavos. And Rab Tzadik HaKoyen ad libs, and he says, because lama lo shnayim, HaKadosh Baruch Hu doesn't need two of a kind. Every single yid for sure is something yichidus. And the idea of the hespade is to see where that meter was lost. So the people who are listening to the hespade will try to emulate that particular meter and so to speak, make up for it because the world must carry on with that meter, which is particular. So I believe that our job is to isolate those special meters of the nifta. It goes without saying that he was an outstanding guy. And it doesn't have to be said. When the Gedele Rache HaYeshiva, who was busy with Limud HaTayra, Lalame Taira. We don't even have to mention of that he was a tzaddik ben tzaddik, that his father was 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 uh, one of the yechidei hadar, that Beis Yisrael was nishnah of. It's need, needless to say, I would like to formulate my hesped with with kashas. We'll begin with kashas. Namely, we know that the one that we call lovingly the Chafetz Chaim, wrote a sefer on Shmir Salashin. And somehow Klai Yisrael took that sefer to describe him, the Chafetz Chaim. Uh, we, don't even, we, we occasionally will say the Mishnah Brura, but mostly people know him as the Chafetz Chaim, and he wrote a sefer on Shmir Salashin that so many people have kviyasin in that particular sefer. So if I would challenge someone, why did the Chafetz Chaim choose Shmiras Halosh? I would get a lot of different answers. 
But I maintain that the answer that I'm going to give later on is really the answer. And of course, I will bring my proofs to what I want to derive from that. Why did he choose Shmiras Halash? There's a Gemara in Sanhedrin of Tzadik Dalad Omer Aleph. The Gemara, it's really what we call eschatology that you find many times in the Gemara. B'K Shakarish Baruch Hu Lassus Chizkiya Mashiach V'san Cherev Goigu Mogoig. This was supposed to be it. And of course, we have much to learn from these Gemaras, albeit the Rambam says in the 11th, I believe, the 11th parak of Hilchas Malachim, that you shouldn't learn all those Gemaras of the Asamashiach of Achrushayamim, because you really don't know, not the Alacha, not the Agada, you really don't know good shot. But nevertheless, if the Gemara says it, the Gemara gives us a message. And the real message that the Gemara is giving us is that if Chizki was supposed to be Mashiach and Geig Amog and Sanchel was supposed to be Geig Amog of Achris Hayomim, but it didn't take place. So, the, the, and we'll soon see why it didn't take place. The Gemara is giving us a message that they're revealing to us the templates of Mashiach. In fact, what comes out of the Gemara in that whole sugya is that the Maish saw the similar bonim of Mashiach is when Avram Avinu had his war with the Arba Malachim, and the Arba Malachim, the Medrash tells us, represent Arba Malchias. So, and the Gemara even tells us that the numbers of the various regiments were equal by Avram Avinu, by, by, San, by Sancherev, and that, that's going to be the number by Gaigu Magai, whatever the numbers represent. So what we're being told is that there's a certain structure that will take place, and it almost happened. Why didn't it happen? The world is ready for Mashiach, in the time of Chizki Melech, it didn't take place because of Midas Sadin. There are few, very few Gemaras that deal with Midas Sadin. In Shabbos Nunhei, the Gemara speaks about how uh, there's a Nevuah from Yecheskel that uh, the Tzadikim and that the time of the Churban was supposed to survive and the Midas Sadin didn't let it take place. There are a few Gemaras that deal with Midas Adin, as if Hashem Kaviyochel is talking to himself, and the Midas Adin prevails. Midas Adin said, how could you make Chizki a Mashiach? You, you showed him so many kindness, and you did whatever you did for David HaMelech, and he said, Shiraz Vishiz Bachas, but you didn't make him a Mashiach. How could you make Chizki a Mashiach where he did, you did so many nisim for him, and he didn't, he didn't utter shira to you. Here you, you, you're going to kill out the whole machnes sancherev with a nes, but there's a pagam, something's wrong, and the midas had not prevailed. Mashiach didn't come. Is it, isn't it very difficult to understand? that Mashiach is ready to come, that means that the Tikkun Olam took place. And it would seem, as we would say in Yiddish, a a guilt of omission, that he didn't say Shira. So Mashiach doesn't come. The world is ready for Mashiach. That's another kasha. A third kasha. The Gemara says in Beya, in Rosh Hashanah, that there was there was a, a mishap on one Rosh Hashanah that Kilkalu Halavim Bashir. Leviim are supposed to say Shir. Machlaik is Sikashira Bakli, Yakishira Bipeh, but there's a different Shir that's said every day. Now it was late, 
the uh, the the Adam Nishtu Alavim Nishtu Adam Lovey Venus Kalkalu Alavim Bashir. They didn't know what's going on. Is it going to be Rosh Hashanah? It becomes Rosh Hashanah retroactively from the beginning of the night when the Levium testify that they saw a sliver of the new moon. So they have to testify. The Adam aren't here yet. What should we do? The Levium said. According to one man, the Yama, they didn't say any shear. They didn't want to say the wrong shear. According to the other ones, they said the wrong shear. As a result of this, Chazal made a takona. Ein mekablan edim and amin cholamayla. So that this kilkul shouldn't take place. And without going into the minutia of the Gemara, this changed the whole structure of Rosh Hashanah. It becomes Kiddush Achas. There were many halachas that pertain to Rosh Hashanah that changed as a result of this Niskalku Alavim Bashir. If you look at it halachically, something very insignificant took place. There's a mitzvah saseh to say shir, the right shir. It was an anus. And as a result of an anus, there was a bit of a mitzvah saseh ba'inus. It's not a dava chomer. And as a result of this, you changed the entire nature of what Rosh Hashanah is all about. Isn't that strange? The Teretz says that halachically, something relatively insignificant took place. Theologically, it was a korban. And let's understand why. The Targum gives us the, the, the taich, what Adam is all about. The Pesach says, Vayipach biyapov nishmas chaya, the Targum says, Ruach memalala that when you want to look at Adam and under, perceive what is Adam all about, he is a talking thing, a spirit that speaks, that no other Bria can share. That's the Yechidus of Adam. So that if there's, and the higher, the greatest epitome of Dibur is Shir, the Shire Zimra and Alelcha, Shir is the highest thing in Kaya Chadibar. Chassidim used to say that there's something really higher, and that's L'chodumiya shit Tehila. In other words, it's ineffable. We, we can't even describe it. But that's really what Adam is all about. Adam is, if you want to speak about Adam, you're talking about a Ruach Memalala. And a Kilkel in Ruach Memalala is a kilkul in Surah Sodom. And Mashiach means that the world reached a tikkun. If there's still a kilkul, even by omission, Chizkiah doesn't say shir. And as the Gemara says, that the real reason why it was supposed to be Deirei Shal Mashiach, as the Novi Yeshaya says, V'chubal oil mipnei shomen, mipnei shamnei shal Chizkiah, that he was Dalek and all the Bata Kinesias of Bata Madrashis. And Yidden were learning Taira. The Gemara in Davchafis and Adam says, Shekhar Achim Vehevel Ayafi, Dale Shochiskia, there was Aeneas, Shisha Miskasim Batalas Achas, and yet they were learning Taira. This was the highest expression of Limara Taira Mitech Aeneas. And that's why Daira Shochiskia was Zaychet to Mashiach is coming. He's or at least he's almost he's almost coming. The Dair is Rail Mashiach because of the Dibur of Taira. Nevertheless, if there's a guilt of omission that Chizkia should say Shira and doesn't, Mashiach cannot come again because of Dibur. And that's the answer. If you know a little bit about the history of Rav Yisrael, Mea HaKoyen Kagan, Zeichet Sadik V'Kodesh Levracha, you know that he lived for Mashiach. He was the first one 
to start a Kailul Kutshim, which today it, it, it goes without saying, and it could very well be that that's why base brisk majored in this. You got to learn Kutshim. Why do you have to learn Kutshim? Maybe because he was a Kay and he had special feeling for it. But if Neshiach comes, we're not going to know what to do. We have to do the Avaida. So we started a Kailu Kutshim. And because you need Svarim, and they were very rare, simply because people didn't learn it. There's a Sefer Chesidim that says that if you learn something that people don't generally learn, it's like being Isaac in a Mess Mitzvah. So you hardly have Svarim. So he printed a Sefer Chesidim, a few volumes that had four or five or six different Rishayim and Farshim. You should at least have them Farshim. Then he put together Likute Halachas, which was his dream of if the riff would have written, the riff only wrote on that, which is Halachalamaisa. If the riff would have written on Zoyim and Kutchim, where we're going to have to know the Halachas when we go back to Eretz Israel in his day, and when we're going to have Hilchas Royim, and we're going to have to do the Avaidim based on the Igdish. So he printed the Likute Halachas, had a riff with a Paskin. And wrote beautiful Pilpulim, where he was Megala, his Goine Goinus, as the Gedolim of the Dar said, that Rav Chaim Brisk is Goinus cover his Sitkis, and the Chafas Chaim Sitkis cover up on his Goinus. So he, he did everything he could. There is no doubt in my mind that the reason he wrote a Sefer on Lashonara was not only because Hilchas Lashonara, he felt people weren't keeping them, he because there can't be Mashiach. He was a Mashiach Jew, and Mashiach can't come if you didn't talk Lashonara. That's the reason he wrote a Sefer on Lashonara. And I maintain that this is really the shot of why he did so. Now, Achshav, that we reach this Indian that Mashiach is totally in Lashon Hara, I would like to talk a little, a, a, a bit about Rabbi David Feinstein Zeichat Sadik the Kodesh Levracha. He was an Ish Kodesh. I remember that there was a time when people came to him. First of all, he was the Shaskin participant. He was such a Shaskin that you can describe whenever he came in for a meeting. We had many meetings. We used to meet in Hatzola. He was one of the Rabbanim that comprised the Anhol of Hatzola. And many a time there were crises. So we had to get together for meetings. He did not talk unless he was asked. His speaker was so pronounced that you can almost say it felt that the, the sound of a hurricane came in. He was such a Shaskin. He, that was his personality. He was a Mishunadik kind person. He didn't, he got involved in any, every aspect of Tzachet Tziba. But when he was presented with one side, he didn't want to take sides. This was his nature. And I remember, I, I know the story that there was a case of an Aguna and it was a Besden which I consider a Besden puzzle because of their Anhaga. But the, the Anhaga was one that they literally, and st they're still active and wanting to make a woman into an Aguna. It, it, the, the, I can't go into the detail. And the uncle of this woman came to Rav David Zatzal with a letter from a Rav that wrote all about the Avlis of the Besden. And he, so Rav, Rav David said, you know, I can't sign. they like, he doesn't do it. The uncle started to cry. The moment he started to, I should say weep, would be a better description. Rav David took out his pen and wrote that one could rely on the Rav who wrote this letter because he reacted to someone's tears. That shows something. All I can tell you, is he was a busy human being. Everyone knows that he was busy with Shurim and the Hachzok of the Yeshiva. 
and because he was a close, he was a Tsiba Jew. So always he would participate whenever they felt that his participation would be important. He gave that priority. But the Ica, whenever I got together with him, whenever I saw him, his Midas Hashtika was Bo Letus. You, you, he was total Shtika. And I believe that if we want to look at his princely, princely person, where every time he was Makabal Kaladam, the safe upon him, Yafais. But he was a Shaisik. And to me, that Shtika shy, showed that he was a Metakain, Oilam, the Malcha Shakai, because he was even on the Shtika. So when we say we usually finish a Hespid with the fact that it was a Hefseid, and one could say the Pusik, Bila Movis Lanetsu Humacha Shemalakim Dima Mialko Ponim, the help of Sama Yosef. So in the Vakish for Mashiach, we say specifically by this Hefseid of someone who was a Mashiach person because he did the Tika Noilam through a Shtika. So we finished all the Hespadim, Hefseidim. With the with the with the with the lack of the lack of that Mashiach is going to come, so his tikkun with a with a shtika certainly is very fitting that we should all be zeicher to Mashiach tzedkenu b'mehera v'yameinu amen. Thank you, <clears throat> Rabbi uh, David Cohen Schlitter. So appreciate uh, your time and presence here. Uh, we're very honored uh, by your words and uh, thank you for, for, for making the time. Uh, we also have a tremendous honor and cover that uh, Rav Shmuel Kamenetsky is joining us now um, together with uh, Rav Sholem Kamenetsky. Um, uh, and and it's, it's such a big honor uh, for us and, uh, and an honor for, for this occasion and um, a, a tremendous honor for um, Rav Feinstein Zatzal um, so uh, we, we thank you so much, um, Rosh Hashiva, uh, 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 Rav Shmuel, and Rav Shalom Kamenetsky Shlita. Thank you so much for, for joining and, uh, and and for being part of it today. Um, it's a it's, it's a tremendous covet for this gathering, and thank you for making the time. I'd like to Berushus uh, and Banova to ask you to to share some words. Thank you so much, Anna Goldstein. I'll preface by saying my father is not yet with me. I'm hoping to have him towards the end, closer to a quarter to our time, 12.45 our time. At this point, he was unable to be part of this, but I'm hoping that he will join for a few minutes towards the end. Thank I'll just you. say a few brief a few minutes. Just first, firstly, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to be part of this Asifos Chizuk. It's an unbelievable thing, especially at a time like this, that we lost one of the Gidoyle Yisrael Kip Shutai. I want to pause for a moment and try my best to define a God will be Israel, a big person. To generally just push it in simple terms, we say the following statement. If you see a person walking down the street where one hand is longer than the other, is a Balmum. If one foot is longer than the other, is also a Balmum. We see a person walking down the street with a very large body and a very small head, he's a Balmum. A large head, a brilliant head, a big head, but a small body, Vaiter a Balmum, still a Balmum. In Odom Godla means that all his limbs are proportionately big. A big head, a big heart, big hands and big feet. Hands that do the mice they're supposed to do as an Odom Godel. Feet that go from place to place, they have to go as an Odom Godel. A large, huge head and a huge heart. That's a consistent Odom Godel. Sure. Let's take a moment let more and say how Chazal defined the term Odom Godel. Rashi Kiyodua says, as God lecha, as Yotcha Chazoka, says the Elik Rashi, as God lecha, your greatness, Zu Midas Tuvcha. As God lecha, we define Zu Midas Tuvcha, the greatness of a person that is Meitiv Machrini. That's the true Meitiv Machrini. A person who's an Adam Godoil, when he's Meitiv Machrini, like we define a Kodesh Baruch Hu. Chazal tell us something else. The Gemara you, tells us, However, the Maral quotes this Gemara, the Maral quotes it as saying, The place of HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Gedula, 
Shoma Tamoitzi and Visanuse, that's the place you find on Visanuse Shala Kodesh Borhu. And Chazan tell us that was at Kosov Batoire, Vishomi Banevim, Vishulaj Baksuvin. Mal asked the obvious question, whatever the point may be, the need to stress this in all Chelke Atoire, that the Mokim Dulose Shala Kodesh Borhu, Shoma Tamoitzi and Visanuse is very telling. It tells us something which is descriptive of a Kodesh Borhu. His gedula, his gevur, his midos, his midos trumiyos, his great midos, obviously, have to come coupled with b'mokim dulosai shoma tamoitza and v'sanusa. To which the Maral responds and says as follows: He ha anova, he etzem ha gedula, he ha gedula al kol ha gedula is achen gedula gedoy lehinem. The real ultimate gedula, says the Maharal, is the midos ha anova. He says, Fascinating statement. There is no gvul to a baal onov. There is no, there's no shear to it. There's no gather to it. He need to describe that every midu that he contained, being that it came coupled with anvisanusoi, is the ultimate true gedula. Gedula isn't defined as the midu per se. It comes along with anvisanusoi. So we have the two nekudas that Chazal tell us clearly and included in the term Adam Godoil. It's at Echod, Dulosai, Lacha Hashem Agdula, Zumidas Tuvoi, and it's at Shein, Mokim Gidulosai, Shama Tamoitza, and Visanusai. The Maral further tells us that the Midas Hanov is called Pashut, it's Pshitus. There is no Gvul, it doesn't end. And obviously, these two things come together. A true Adam Godel is a person that understands to exercise what's called Midas Tuvoi, Midas Tuvoi. And that goodness is lo yugdor v'lo yugvo. That lusa shel Rav David says chetzalev v'kadosh levrocha. As Rav David so beautifully said, v'kadosh levrocha. Indeed, the kadosh. But as midas and v'sanusa, midas and v'sanusa that made him a true emisa adam gadol, pshitus. He was a goyin in pashtus. Welcome to lusa yishama tamoitz and v'sanusa. Indeed. Balho Anova Lo Yugdor Vila Yugvo. That was the Balho Anova, the true Balho Anova. No gather and no gvul the chlal. This was his goddess. I want to add one more Nakuda. Fascinatingly, Chazal tell us the Gedoyla Yisrael were called Eine Ho Eide. We called Eine Ho Eide. The Einaim, Eine Ho Eide. I once saw such a beautiful pshat to Rabbi Kivayedra that he tells the Chashail and he said, of all things we find, he said, and he asked the obvious question. Tikkun Atfilo was nistakein the tzarech kol klal Yisrael, including Amei Oretz that were not learned, not talmidei chachomim. And he says, we, that nonetheless, they said, v'hoyer einenu b'soyer asecha. And he said, pshat nistfilo is v'hoyer einenu b'soyer asecha. Let us give light to our gdoyle Yisrael. V'hoyer einenu the einei ha'edah should become clear. But tayrosa is barach. That's the tefila. And I want to take this one step further. Einei ho'eide. Balei Avoide used to say that a person was given the gift of two einayim, two perspectives. One perspective being how he was able to see God luse shal acher. The second perspective to look in and see and v'sanuse shal atzmon, shifluse shal atzmon. One needs two einayim. Reb David, with his unbelievable gadlus and mocking gadluse shal and v'sanuse, was the one that lived in a way that we understood. He saw Gadlus Shalachimi and he saw and, and Sanusa Shalatzmai. That's a true Adam Godo. Proportionate. Gadlus, Belishum Gvulim, Belishum Gidorim. Understanding that God is Godlacha Zu Midas Tuvcha. That's Godlacha Vemokim Gdulos Shama Tamaitz and Visanusa. It's a falus, it's a loss for us. If we were to take just this message and understand that indeed we're granted two eyes, one eye to see God Lusa Shalachrini and one eye to see Shif Lusa Shalatzneinu, we would all do much better. Let us pray and hope that the those true Einai, that have those double eyes, see God Lusa Shalachrini and their mate even Machrini. In the same time, and the Sanusam, Akadish Bracha, should help and grant us that those Einai Ha'edah should continue being with us. And illuminate ourselves. And at feel of a higher a name of the Sayyid should be meaningful. Let those Aine or Aida be clear and illuminated with Divrei Taira. The Mitzvah Shem, and that will be Zaycha to see the Mitzvah Shem who will also show you saw the Kora. Mr. Shiva, thank you so much for, um, for sharing.
for sharing those uh, beautiful words of, uh, of, of inspiration and Divrei Chizuk and Divrei Hesped. It's such an honor um, that, that you participated and shared Divrei Torah. And, um, uh, and, and thank you so much for that. Uh, we'll wait uh, to see just now if, um, if, if, if possible, it will be a big covered and we'll, uh, we'll uh, but, but we, uh, thank you so much for sharing the beautiful Divrei Chizuk and Divrei Torah. Um, we, to, and, and thank you so much for, for bringing such covered to this, to this gathering. So I'm going to ask now um, uh, Rabbi Gedalia Zlotovitz uh, to, to, to share uh, Divrei Hesped and Divrei Chizuk with us. Um, uh, Rabbi Zlotovitz is um, a dear friend and uh, so appreciate his, his friendship. Thank you, Rabbi Zlotovitz, for, for joining us today and, uh, and Yeshakach to, to you um, for all of the incredible work of Harbatsa's Torah, of spreading Torah around the whole world. Uh, that you do uh, through Art So, so it's a, it's it's a it's a it's an honor to uh, to to have you as part of these um, uh, the, the, this gathering because we know that Rabbi David Feinstein was so close to to Art Scroll and all of the holy work that you do in Harbatz's Torah. So, thank you so much for for sharing with us on this occasion. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chief Rabbi Goldstein, to the entire South African community. It's an honor. And it's really humbling for me to be here, especially to speak after Mayuri Verebi, or of David Konschlita, and after of Kamenetsky. And I thank you very much for the opportunity. In this week's Parsha, Parsha's Chayesara, we find the Pasuk says, Vayavay Avram Lispoid Lissara Vilifkosa. And the Torah says that first Avram Avinu said a Hespid. And only afterwards did he cry. And all the Mepharshim ask that the Gemara Moed Cotton says that usually the order is reversed. First, we cry. We cry right away. And then we give Divrei Hesped. So why by Avram Avinu with Sarah was the order reversed? So I saw one of the Mepharshim say, that there's two reasons why we cry when someone leaves this world. One reason is we're crying for the person who's no longer here. And the second reason is we're crying for ourselves. But we only have to cry for the person who leaves this world when they didn't accomplish their mission on this world and they didn't reach their spiritual accomplishments. But if someone did reach their spiritual accomplishments, then there's no need to cry for them. They're going to Olam HaEmes. Then we cry for ourselves. Avram Avinu knew that he didn't have to cry for Sarah leaving the world. Sarah Imenu was the mother of Klal Yisrael. She was going to a better place. She accomplished what she had to. But he was trying to tell that generation let me first say Divrei Hesped. You have to understand what you lost, and then you'll be able to cry the real cry. And that's why first he said the Hesped, and only afterwards did he cry. Rabbi Goldstein, when you called me to speak, I was wondering why me. There are so many Chasheva people, and Baruch Hashem was sharing this evening with so many Chasheva people. But as you mentioned, this is not about me, this is about the relationship that Reb David Zechet Tzadeh V'Kadosh Levracha had with my father Zatzal, going back to when my father was a teenager in MTJ. And in the 1970s, the world, the Torah world, was really limited to those who were able to study in yeshiva, the few Yechidim who were able to leave yeshiva and had a good background to be able to study. But Torah was really closed to so many people around the world. There was a language barrier. They didn't understand the language. And when my father started Art Scroll, Reb David Zechetzad V'Kadosh Levracha was his number one supporter. They were good friends. He was his Rebbe, and he encouraged him on a constant basis 
to go ahead and persevere. And he had the vision to see how the world would be changed and how Torah would be spread throughout the world. He read the earlier manuscripts, he commented on them. He was our guiding light. Every question we had went to him. He was a deciding factor in all our decisions. Even if we thought that we started projects and he said not to continue, we dropped it right away. But that happened very rarely. He encouraged and he wanted us to do more and more. We say the Pasuk in Mishle says, Torah chesed al -lishona. And the Gemara in Sukkah asks, is there such a thing as Torah of chesed and a Torah not of chesed? And the Gemara says, Torah le lambda, that when Torah is there and it's taught, it's given over, zuhi Torah's chesed. That is Torah's chesed. Rabbi Aaron Kotler, Zechit Tzadik Levracha, said, an inch, a big chiddish on this Gemara. He said, when it comes to all other chesed, whether it's giving tzedakah, helping somebody out to build their sukkah, to give them a ride somewhere, whatever other chesed it might be, the recipient would receive that chesed even if the giver of the chesed wasn't the one to give it. Someone else would have stepped up. Hashem gives the giver of the chesed the opportunity in the schus to do the chesed, but the recipient would have received it either way. When it comes to Torah, Rav Aaron said, if you wouldn't teach that person Torah, quite possibly that person never would have learned that Torah. And that's why Torah's chesed is so important. Because when you take from your time as a Rebbe, as a Rav, as a Manig, and you teach Torah to your students, to your congregants, you're doing the ultimate chesed because you're teaching them Torah that may, they may never have learned without you. If that's the case, Rib David Zechetzad Vekadl Levracha really represented Torah's chesed. It's because of him that Art Scroll was created and flourished and Torah is spread throughout the world. And how many hours, hundreds of thousands, millions of hours are because of his encouragement to my father Zatzal. There's so much to say about Rib David. I mean, the fact that his brachis worked, I had a personal story where I went to him with my daughter, one Cholomite Sukkis, and I, she was going into Shaduchim, and we asked for a bracha. And we said, she's starting Shaduchim. Rashiva, can she please have a bracha? And he looks up at her, and he says, Amir Tzashem, before Rosh Chodesh Adar. And then he paused, and he said, Rishon. And my wife and I walked out of that room, and we knew without any doubt that it was going to happen. And not only was she engaged by Rosh Chodesh Adar Rishon, she was married by then. And you'll speak to Talmidim and people who went for brachis and medical advice. And Baruch Hashem, we saw unbelievable nisim. But that's not what I'm here to speak about, because I want to speak about the things that we can gain from his life. Even when it comes to his, his Torah knowledge, with Srili Besa, my dear friend, in this week's coming Mishpacha article, writes that he, in, he once interviewed Rib David Zechetzad of Kaddish Levracha about his father. And this is a quote from Rib David speaking about Rib Meishah Zatzal. The world, he remarked, will gain nothing from knowing how many times my father finished Shas or that he was fluent in all of Torah Shabbat Peh. When people speak of my father, they speak of his compassion, how he had time for children, for broken-hearted individuals. The bigger a person is, the more chesed he must do. And that's how we know who the true Tamidei Chachamim are. So taking Reb David's Eichetzadeh directive, I just want to share a few stories that we could use 
as examples in our life. When you walked into the room with him and you knew you were in the presence of greatness, you were always at ease. You were never nervous. He made you feel calm and he focused on you. When he was speaking to you, there was no one else in the world. He wasn't shuffling papers. He wasn't taking phone calls. He certainly wasn't looking at a phone. He focused on you because he knew that right at that moment, you were the most important person in the world. My father used to tell the story that Rib David many years ago passed by the soda machine in MTJ and he had the key to the machine and a young boy in the yeshiva comes over to him and says, Rebbe, I lost some money in the machine. So Rib David walks over to the machine, he opens it up and he's giving the boy back his money. And someone comes over to Rib David and says, there's someone waiting for you. A Rosh Hashiva is waiting for you in your office. And he says, I understand, but this child lost a quarter. And to him right now, that's the most important thing in the world. Please let me finish dealing with him. And then I will take care of my next appointment. Someone told me yesterday that on Rosh Hashanah in Yeshiva, so a woman had to use his office. She had to take care of her baby. So her husband went to Reb David and asked him for a key to his office. And it was during Kriya Satora. And he gave the person the key for his wife to use the office. And then came the time for Tkia Shoifa. And Reb David was the Makri. He called out Tkia Shvarim. And they're about to start. And Reb David's looking around and he sees in the crowd this young, young man who asked him for the key and he calls him over and he says, did your wife finish what she had to do? I don't want to start to key us without making sure she's back in the room. Right before to key a chauffeur, but he was thinking about the individual. Someone else told me that he saw Rib David hurrying out of the yeshiva one day. And he had a, a thought that he was machadish something on Megillah Esther. So he walks over to him. He says, Rebbe, can I tell you a vart on the Megillah? So Rib David said, of course. And he listens patiently, says something about the vart, encourages the person. And then he rushes out to the car. The next day, this person goes over to the driver and says, I never saw Rib David in such a rush. Where was he going? He said he was having some chest pains and he asked me to take him to the doctor. Yet when this person stopped him, he knew that to this person, it was the most important thing in the world. And he didn't even let on that he was rushing to a doctor's appointment. Another story that comes to mind, the last one on this topic, he was leaving a kiddush on Shabbos and someone wanted to walk him home. So Rashiva says, of course you can walk me home. And as they're he's, he's leaving, the father sees that his young child is carrying some nash on a plate. So he tells the child, you have to leave the nash here. We have to walk home with the Rosh Hashiva. And the Rosh Hashiva says, no, 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 no. Let him finish the nash. And he says, no, but he, I'll give him more nash at home. He says, absolutely not. To this child, this plate of nash is right now the most important thing in the world. And he waited, he sat down, and he let the child finish all the nash. And only then did he get up and leave. The focus of everyone, it didn't make a difference how old you were. If you were a someone, a yid, someone who came over to him, you were a person, you were the most important thing at that time. And then there's another lesson we could learn, a fascinating story. My father... Rabbi Zdorovitz, can I ask you, Rabbi Shmuel Kamineski has just joined us for a few minutes. Can I ask Rabbi, sure. uh, the Rosh Hashiva just to share a few words and you'll continue after the of Rosh Hashiva. Course. Rosh Hashiva, th thank you so much for, for joining. Uh, it's such a great COVID. Um, Rosh Hashiva, and thank you for, for all of the years of, of, of support. Remember when the Rosh Hashiva came to, to Johannesburg, 
and uh, gave so much chizuk to the community here. So Rosh Hashiva, it's such an honor uh, to have you to have you with us. Uh, if, if, the, if Rosh Hashiva can share a few words of, of divrei chizuk, uh, it, it would be much appreciated. It is very hard to believe that Reb David left us so suddenly. Reb David was an individual that he didn't speak much, but he was the Elwachkeit. He came in as it came out by itself. So his whole Mahalach was a Mahalach. He was very Zohir what he said when he moved, when he went. He was his whole his whole life was a life from a from a good mother, an individual that was not with not with a amoyin ham, not with us. He, what he gave for the world was whatever he had. He gave for the world. The devotion to other people had no limitations. Had no limitations. He was so devoted to people that whatever a person needs. That's his need. He didn't know anything else. He just knew that he can help people. That was a guy. He was a guy in helping, in helping people to do for people whatever they needed. He was always ready to help. His whole Matthias was that he, he didn't live for himself. He lived for Kalvis Lord. So unfortunately, the Rabbi took him away from us. It was such a shock for the whole world because I'm a person that's muscle to the cloud is, 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 is a going item by himself, a going item understanding, besides in learning, understanding people, understanding the need of people, what people need. Therefore, we really feel that the Bajisham took away something, somebody from us that was part of Kalvis Soil. It was his, his devotion was so so heart, heartfelt, and he felt and he whatever he can do for you is ready to do. So we have to understand it's a shvela time. It's a time that the Rebbe Shlom took away Gedolei Yisrael from us. Gedolei Yisrael from the Chachomim. We have to ask the Rebbe Shlom. He should have Rachmanus on us. Rachmanus on Kol Yisrael. Rebbe Shlom says help him. Thank you, Rosh Hashiva. Much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. Such a for, for the time of the Rosh Hashiva, so appreciated. And, uh, and uh, thank you. And of course, Baruch Hu should continue to bless the Rosh Hashiva with uh, with Brios Nabatzas Torah. Vidal, I apologize. <laughs> continue. <laughs> If us lot of us, please uh, continue. It was really uh, some very important stories and insights that you were sharing. Just didn't want to keep uh, the Rosh Hashiva waiting. He was just coming in for a few minutes. Thank you. A, you don't have to apologize. That was an honor to share the stage with such greatness. Thank you. Let's finish off. This is an amazing story. My father used to speak to Reb David practically every day, but Friday was a special time. That was a longer phone call. And one time he was on the phone with Reb David and Reb David asked him to hold on, he had another call. And my father waited about five, six minutes and Reb David came back on and they continued the conversation. That Shabbos, at the Shabbos table, one of my siblings was there for Shabbos, one of my married siblings. And in the course of the conversation, they mentioned that they called Rib David yesterday on Friday with a Shaila. And my father said, you called yesterday around what time? And they said, well, it was around whatever time it was. And my father chapped that that was the phone call Rib David put him on hold for. The confidentiality. Not to how many people would come back on the call and say, Oh, I just spoke to your children. But Rabdavi would never do that. It was a call made in confidence. He didn't say one word to my father. So far, that when my father spoke to him again on Sunday and he mentioned, Oh, I heard that my children called when I was on the phone with you, 
Reb David didn't respond. What a lesson in keeping a secret in confidentiality when people trust you not to say something over. And just to finish off, the ultimate chesed begins at home. The way he treated Yabada ben Chayil Mechayim the Rebetzin, the patience he had for her to get into a car, out of a car, it wasn't easy. He would, Reb David Zechetzadeh V'Kadosh Racha would do the shopping for Shabbos. He would help clear the table. If that's what the Rebetzin needed, to him that was the most important thing. His family, his children, he had Klal Yisrael on his shoulders, yet he cared about every single member of his family as well. Because Chesed, he understood, and he taught us, begins at home. We're living in very hard times, and we're losing so many gedolim. And it's very hard, but I guess the only way we could go on is to take these lessons from Rav David Zechitzadeh B'Kadosh Levracha and use them in our life. If the Rabbi Nishleim is giving us life and we get up every day, it's because he wants us to keep on accomplishing and being Mekadosh Shem Shemayim every single day. Thank you for the opportunity and we should only share Besuras Tovos in the future. Thank you, Rabbi Zlatovitz, um, and, and thank you um, all. I, I want to just uh, end this uh, this gathering just with, with, with a few words um, that I would like to that I'd like to share. Just a few words, a few minutes, just to close this gathering. But I'm so so grateful to everyone for for coming to today to to participate in the mitzvah of Kovet Hatorah. And, uh, and and thank uh, Rav, Rav David Cohen uh, Schlitter uh, for, for for your words and for your time, and uh, of course to to the Rosh the Roshay Yeshiva Rav, Rav Shmuel and Rav Sholom Kamenetsky Schlitter. We we're very grateful to to both of them, and uh, and and to you, uh, Rabbi Zlatovitz. Thank you so much for for sharing such important words of Divrei Chizuk. Uh, allow me if Berushus uh, the Rabbonim. And the Kahal Hakodesh, just to to share a few words of of um, of chizuk that, that that I'm trying to draw from the Petira of Rav David uh, Feinstein um, uh, Zatzal, and and that is the the Mida that 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 has made the, the deepest impression on me, and I think it's something that maybe could be a message for our generation at this time, is uh, because there's so much that, that that one could learn. I'm just sharing one idea that that and 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 that Mida is the midah of humility of Anova, but it's, it's even more than that. It's, it's the depth of, of being a poshut in, in the sense of not uh, the, the opposite of what Chazal talk about, Yuhara, the, the very opposite of that. In other words, the sense of, of total humility, which is captured in the Gomorrah in Sanhedrin on Daf Peiches Amud Beis, Ezu Ben Olam Haba. And the Gomorrah says, who is the person who's a Ben Olam Haba? And and the words of this of this of this Gemara uh, seem to describe um, uh, Rav David Feinstein's Atzal to a T when it talks about Baruch Shaiv Vail Nofik Shaiv Venofik Vagaris Baraisa Tadira Veino Machzik Tivusel and Nafshelze that uh, it, it says that who's the Ben Olam Haba? Someone who, who goes with humility, who enters the base Midrash bowing down with humility, who learns and then leaves the base Midrash with humility and doesn't hold doesn't hold for himself that he's done something which is special. And then it says, Yavu Bey Rabbonin and I, they all turned to, uh, to see Rav Ula Bar Abba because it was a big middah. It's not everyone is okay to such a mid. And I feel that in our door, if, if one were to describe this Gemara, who would all the Chachamim turn their eyes to be the epitome of this statement of Chazal, of someone who goes with humility and learns and doesn't hold for himself that it's a, that it's a toiva, that the, 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 the door would turn to Rav David Feinstein. And I think that the, 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 the limud for, for us on this becomes something which is, which is so important and, and, and so powerful because um, he's talking, the, what the, the Midah is, and I think it is actually, it's, it's captured in, in a tshuva in the Igris Moshe, in, in Chelek Aleph of Yoridea, uh, in, in Simon Samach Beis. The, the Igris Moshe says, Rav Moshe Feinstein says, he has a shayla about blended whiskey. 
which has the wine, which has wine in it. And there's a, no, it's, it's a complicated child in Alokha and he has three simonim going up and down uh, that if it's got the wine base in it, is it okay? Is it not okay? What's the, what, 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 what's, what, what is the halacha on it? And, uh, and, and Rav Moshe comes to the, to the conclusion. He says there that uh, there are materium and there are oysterim. And, and he says that there's, there's almilismoch, that one can rely on it. And I'm not, I'm not paskening it, I'm just sharing what the Igros Moshe says. And then he says, but he himself, Rav Moshe himself, takes it on as a chumrah not to have the blended whiskey. But then he says an amazing thing in the tshuva. He says, he says here in, in this Loshan, he says, um, and he says, Af, um, he says, Ani atzmi, I, I, I don't have it. He says, Rak bechabura. He said, I have it. If I'm, if I'm on my own, I won't have the whiskey. But if I'm in a group of other people, So Reb Moshe says an amazing thing. He says that um, he doesn't want it to look arrogant. So he says, even though al it's completely, you know, it's, it's, it's mutra al pihalocha, although he holds one should be machmir in it. And he has the shaila from uh, Rav Mordechai uh, Pinchas Tights of Elizabeth, New Jersey, was the one who asked him the shaila. And he says that it's a very important thing and a good thing to, uh, to, to you know, to, to be machmir. And he himself holds for that chumrah. He takes on that chumrah, but he said if he's with people, he doesn't want to look arrogant. So you have Rav Moshe Feinstein Satsal, Godel Hador, he, when he's, he, he has a personal humor, but he doesn't want to show it uh, in, in front of other people so that he shouldn't appear arrogant. And uh, Rav David Feinstein took on this midah from, from his father, if one can say. And it's such an important midah for, for all of us. I found in a tzavar of uh, the Magid of Polachak, who is a Talmud of the Vilna Goen, who wrote a tzavar, he wrote an ethical will to his children, and he goes on this Gemara in Sanhedrin that we referred to, because it says, Ezuhu ben Olam Haba, a person who goes with humility and doesn't hold himself to be arrogant, and then the, the Magid of me, Polachak says on this, uh, he, he, he says, amru ha -ane He said, what did the Gemara not say? This is a Talmud of the Vilna Goen. He says, what did the Gemara not say? The Gemara did not say, it's, it said, who is a Ben Olam Haba, a person who is tremendous humility and learns and doesn't hold it for himself and doesn't become arrogant from it. It doesn't say a person who fasts often, who says many tachnunim of bakoshes, a person who he says here has um, uh, long tzitzis and big tefillin. This is what a, a Talmud of the, the Vilna Gaon writes here. And he says, Ra, that is a person who holds himself with humility and with anava. And then he, he goes on to say, how you hara, if there's, there's a sense of arrogance where a person is doing things on externalities in order to impress people, in order to show off, in order to show that tzitkus, how, how, how destructive that is. And he even compares it to a chashveirosh wearing the big day coin uh, godl. And, uh, and, and what he says is everything we need to do has to be but sneers, that people shouldn't see it. And this is the amazing thing of Rav David Feinstein's Atzal, is that he carried himself on the outside, like a posher to yid. He, the, the, the clothes that he wore, a simple, an, an ordinary jacket, an ordinary hat, the, the, the way that he carried himself, he would stop by with friends and go past the bagel shop and, uh, and sit and have something to eat there. He would be he would engage with people. He didn't carry himself as the Godel Hador. He was the Poisek Hador that everyone turned to him and no one would move without him. And he didn't carry himself and show himself to be the, uh, as if he's the Melech of Klal Yisrael. On the contrary, he carried himself with tremendous humility. And I think for us, the, 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 the message needs to be a sense of, we, must, we, we, we need to be internally focused. Sneus is not just a question of, of dress code. Sneus is an entire state of being, the sense of total modesty of everything being inward focused, looking in, 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 in terms of Hashem, what does Hashem think, not in terms of what everyone else around and trying to impress people. And uh, the, in, in this tzavo, the Magid Mipolachak actually goes on to quote from many Divrei Chazal, where he says, Yuhara, the externalities and, the, and arrogance and trying to show off and trying to pretend and trying to hold up a certain image. He says, he brings here, it's Machriv Shiduchim, it's Machriv Talmud Torah, it's Machriv, all of the things which are most precious. Because when it comes to Shiduchim, we need to be focused on the inside of the person, who the person is, not on the, ex not on the, the trappings and the shtick and the sense of, 
of all of the things that we look to impress. When it comes to Talmud Torah, we need to be focused on the, the essence of Avodah Hashem and internal Avodah Hashem and who we are. That is what we need to be focused on. And this is what Rabbi David Feinstein taught us all. He taught us through his life. He was the Godel Hadori, he was the greatest of Poiskim. He was an incredible Talmud Chochem beyond anything that we can even begin to, 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 to fully appreciate. And, and no one moved without him. And yet, and, and, and yet look how he carried himself. He carried himself like a posha to Yid because he understood that is the greatest covet of all is to be a person of deep and, and intense humility, a person who is completely obsessed with inside, with who we are inside and not to show that to the world. To Hatznei Lechesim Elokecha at Sinius, which is in the eyes of Hashem, that is the only thing. So I, th I think what we need to all take and uh, to, to take from this is the sense that let us try to learn from, from Rav David Feinstein, learn from his, his Yira Shemaim, learn from his Chesed, learn from his Anova and his Tznius, and take that into our lives, his incredible Tznius, and that should be a schus for him, that if we, he can continue to teach us, not only through his piske din and his svarim and everything, but he should teach us through his midos, and we can take that on, then we can come out of this through tshuva, because when, when we lose a godel shuba Yisrael, we need to do tshuva, we need to improve ourselves, it should be a his oirerus to become a greater klal Yisrael, and uh, some yetz Hashem, that uh, if we can take this on as a Hisoirus, and this gathering is a gathering of Hesped, but it's also Chizuk for Hisoirus, that if we can take this on, then we can co go forward, and it should be an Aliyah for his Nesham, a Schus for him, and, uh, and ultimately uh, a, schus, a Schus for all of us. I want to thank everybody for, for being part of this, and uh, for, for being part of this great mitzvah of Kovet HaTorah. Uh, thank you, Rav, Rav David Cohen, for, for, for being part of this in, entire proceedings. Your, your presence is, um, is such an honor for each and every single one of us and, uh, and an honor for Rav David Feinstein. And, uh, and all of this should be a, a tremendous chizuk for all of us and, uh, and, and should just be a nechama to the entire family and a nechama to all of Klal Yisrael. Thank you all so much.